Good morning. I am extremely excited today. It is the end of May and today is the first day that I'm going to be harvesting some rhubarb from my garden. This variety here is called strawberry red rhubarb. Now a lot of rhubarb have that really bitter taste to them which is the traditional rhubarb taste um, but the strawberry red rhubarb has a very sweet taste so when you're using it, you don't actually have to add as much sugars as you would with a lot of the other ones. So I've already harvested some here. And as you can see, we've got lots of really nice deep red stalks and they're just gorgeous. I just love them. Um, this plant itself, all, there's three plants here actually. There's one here, one here, and then another one behind it. And there's actually some smaller plants coming up around that are just, they've come up on their own. And these plants haven't had any care or anything whatsoever for the last 20 plus years. Uh, so they're a very hardy growing plant on their own once they become established. But for the first few years when you're growing them, you want to give them a little bit of extra care, a little bit extra watering for the first year especially, um, while they really get established. And giving them a higher nitrogen fertilizer in the springtime to promote lots of foliage growth up top and then giving them a higher phosphorus fertilizer in the fall to help build up good roots so that that root system can withstand its first winter outdoors. But after a few years, they really, really get established and you don't have to do much of anything except for come and harvest. So a few things about rhubarb is the leaves themselves are toxic, so you don't want to be eating them. They're not toxic to touch at all, but there's a chemical in them that would not agree with us, or does not agree with us at all. So you do not want to eat the leaves at all, and the roots as well. So what we're actually harvesting from the rhubarb is the stems. So what I do is I reach in, and I'll show you guys when I, what, how I do it. So this plant, it's come up, it's one of the, it's the very first plant up in the springtime. Like these leaves are poking up through the ground while there's still snow on the other side of the yard. So they're just amazingly resilient and they come up real early. So rhubarb itself is actually a vegetable, but because of its um, properties, because of the way that it is, many people think of it more as a fruit-like and use it for jams and baking and a lot of things like that. Uh, I really love it in like a strawberry rhubarb pie. That's what my mom has always made and I just love it so much. But another thing that I really like it done with is you reduce it down. So you put it into a pot with some sugar, not much sugar, just like a couple of tablespoons and a tiny bit of water and you boil it down for 20 minutes or half an hour into a reduction and then it becomes like a nice super sweet sauce for putting on ice cream or eating just like that or however you want and it's just amazing. So that's what I'm going to be doing with mine here today and I'm also going to be sharing a lot of it because it's so abundant. Like I've, I've taken a good amount in this tote here. Hi Opie. We got a good amount in this tote and it hasn't even put a dent in the plants. Hi sweetie. This is Opie coming in. She loves the garden. Okay, come on. Come here. Sit. You can sit. Keep it in there. Okay, come here. All right. So when I go to harvest the leaves or the pieces that I want, I don't want to go for the biggest, fattest ones, and I don't want to go for the tiniest ones either. So finding a nice medium-sized one is perfect. So if you look right here. This is a nice, perfect size. It's come out, it's got a nice deep red stem on it. So I go down to as low as I want to take it, which is about an inch or so above the point where it comes out of the ground. And I take my knife and I just make a clean cut. It's very easy, very, very easy to cut. It's very similar to celery in the appearance of it and the way that it cuts. Of course, not the taste or anything beyond that but just the, um, the way that it cuts and the way that it looks. It's very celery-like. And then I just cut the top off right here, and that's it. So that's what I'm gonna harvest, and then this will go out into the compost.
and I just continue doing that all the way along until I get as much as I want. Now with smaller plants, you're not going to have the luxury of choice as much. Um, so you don't want to take the entire plant away, right? With plants this big, I wouldn't want to come and chop all the leaves off because then that would really steal a lot of the energy away from it. The leaves that are on here are actually what feeds the plant energy and creates it to become a bigger plant. So if you take all of them off, then it steals that away and then it'll really inhibit the growth. So I just take a couple sections out of it and then go to the next one and then go to the next one. But with three plants, there's so much abundance that I can't even keep up with it. There's no way I would ever be able to use this much. It's just so much. So it's a really fast growing and recovering plant. Um, they will also flower too. So you wanna take that flower stem off because once it starts to flower, then it doesn't have as good of a quality of rhubarb on it. So the flower comes up in a bud and you just chop that whole piece right off. I removed a few earlier, I'll show you. Here, so this is what the flower looks like. It's just a big piece that comes out. It almost looks like a, like a cauliflower head almost. And you just wanna cut that off and get it out of there. And unless you want it to go to seed, but when it goes to seed, you're not gonna be harvesting off of it anymore. They're a pretty hardy plant over the winter. Um, I don't cover these things or anything. I just mulched this area here this year. It was just grass and whatever all around it. This is a, from a very, very old garden about 40, 35, 40 years ago. And the rhubarb is all that's left. And um, it's, it's enormous, it's huge and prolific. So I'm very, very grateful to have these three plants here. And last year, this was all that was in the yard for food. And now this year, if you look around, I'm creating gardens all over. So I'm very excited and um, the abundance is beginning. So I'm gonna be sharing a lot of this rhubarb throughout the year. And even today, I'm gonna call on a couple friends and see if they would like some rhubarb. It's a full sun plant. They like six hours of direct sun or more for optimal growth. Um, if you don't have a full, full sun, you can still have them. They're just not gonna grow as big and full, but giving them that super full sun like this here gets direct sun. But well, at this time of the year, they're getting about 12 hours of direct sun a day. So there's no shortage of sun at all whatsoever. Um, keeping them in ground is fine. At the end of the year, if, you, if you're worried about um, the winter, you can mulch them. Just mulch over top of them. You can put straw over top of them, but I don't think it's necessary. These have been here forever and they're never protected or anything. So, and they just keep getting bigger and bigger. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you learned something about rhubarb. And if you have any questions, drop them down below. Subscribe to my videos because more of them are coming. And I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Opie and I bless you. Have a great day.